Now I'd like to take you uh, through uh, 1910 uh, ENT office. And I want to give you first a background about this particular office. In 1989, I received a letter from a Dr. Keith Wilbur. Apparently, Dr. Wilbur uh, was a physician. He also dabbled with antique business, so he bought and, and sold uh, medical antiques. And in his letter of 19, 1989, he stated that he found a complete ENT room, uh, examining room, uh, from a, a physician, Dr. Uh, Silvers, in, in New York City. And, and he said that it dates back to uh, uh, early 1900s. So as we know, uh, it's so unusual to find a complete ENT room because usually when we something becomes outdated, we just throw it away. I mean, nobody saves uh, their units. But for a reason or the other, it was saved, so I did not really believe it. I just asked him to send me some pictures, and he so, so sent me a few pictures here uh, of the, of the, of the uh, room. Um, so after this correspondence, I decided to go ahead and buy it. And the interesting thing that this ENT room came with uh, a lot of information about Dr. Silvers. Apparently, Dr. Uh, Lewis Silvers was a leading physician and otolaryngologist in the field of electrosurgery. And the, the, the very interesting thing is all of these reprints of articles he uh, published came with the, with the uh, room, and this gave me a window to look at uh, the technology at that time. Uh, for instance, uh, here is an article that he published around 1928 about uh, immunologic aspect of electrosurgery of, uh, in rhino, rhin, 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 rhinolaryngology. Another article here uh, is the same thing about physical therapy in otolaryngology. Um, there is uh, an article uh, here about uh, the uh, electrosurgery in rhinolaryngology and solution for tonsils, turbinates, and sinus problems. So now we use all this modern cautery and, and, and uh, knives that we have. At that time, they tried the same thing. They tried to, to remove the tonsils using a technique, using electro, uh, uh, electrical current. Uh, to uh, remove it. So he was very well published. I also had the announcement of opening his office uh, uh, here uh, in uh, New York City, uh, 64 East 87th Street. I'm going to walk you through uh, the Lewis Silver's ENT examining room from New York City dated around 1910-1920. And if you look at this uh, unit, at this uh, room, uh, it's basically the same as we have today, but certainly uh, different. So you, first thing you see, that's the examiner's chair. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, leather covered. The original leather is still in good shape. It's, it's about 100 years old. Uh, the fascinating uh, part is the patient's chair. And as you can see, it's cast iron. Uh, and uh, that's how you control the, the height of the uh, patient, where you, the height you want to put the patient, the headrest here, and uh, the pump to raise the chair up and down is in the back. It came with a typical uh, treatment unit. This is a treatment unit, and if you look at it, it's very similar to what we have. It has uh, the air pressure here, it has the, the vacuum here to suction uh, ear or nose, and you can see inside here uh, the old uh, suction machine, uh, and the, other, the pressure is on the other side. Uh, this is a machine uh, treatment unit called Dr. C.J. Uh, Imperator uh, Treatment and diagnostic unit, and it is manufactured by Sklar. Sklar, at that time, it used, still used to be a big company. Uh, with it came also uh, this unit. This is called the, the 
uh, diathermy unit uh, model 480 and it is manufactured by the High Tension Corporation in New York City and it has two functions it has a diathermy here so you get these electrodes and put them here and you control the intensity here or coagulation and again you control the intensity here this unit here uh, converts the alternating uh, current to direct current and uh, frankly I researched it a lot I cannot find exactly what was it used for and it is manufactured by Fisher and I think this is uh, in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, the fascinating part of this room uh, is this called the Morse wave generator. This is uh, a complete set. Uh, what it did, um, by the way, it's, it's manufactured by General X-ray Company in Boston, Massachusetts. And it shows here the, the uh, indication for it is uh, to use the galvanic current and uh, it will stimulate uh, several parts of the of the uh, cranial nerves especially you can see here the facial nerve trigeminal nerve and uh, the theory behind it that uh, using it uh, it will help recovery of uh, reco uh, to recover from bell's palsy um, uh, another part of the manual, it shows here that it's, it's good for deafness, uh, only chronic deafness, not acute, and good for nerve testing. So, uh, is this uh, a fad? Is this, uh, we don't know the technology at that time, whether this was a state of the art uh, technology. Again, the, the unusual thing about this uh, examining room is being a complete examining room then again, uh, it shows you, uh, it, it is a window uh, that we can look at how ENT was practiced uh, around 1910, 1920.